Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is the New Testament in 31 days. We're on day 28. And today we will be reading James 3 through 2 Peter 3. Hmm. Cool. So let's get started. There's lots to get into, but I think for the most part these chapters are for the most part shorter. So Anyway, let's start in James 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. I don't know why I almost said bridle. <laughs> you always hear about the bit in the bridle. Or maybe the bit in the bridle is the same thing. I'm not sure. Uh, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds yet are they churned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind but if the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man, and endued with the knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentile, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Yeah, you know, it just reminds me of the verse in the Bible that says, Blessed are the peacemakers. I always think about that in my mind when um, there's any kind of conflict and as a human in a sinful body, you immediately want to spew back, you know, whatever the the argument is, or someone's saying bad stuff about you, or whatever the case may be. You always want to to spew back right away. But it, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, "Blessed are the peacemakers." And then in, in Psalms and Proverbs, we did the reading plan in Psalms and Proverbs. Um, it says, you know, to be slow to speak, slow to anger, and again, it's talking about your tongue and how evil can proceed through your mouth. And then, in, uh, is it in Matthew? It's one of the Gospels where Christ says that um, what you put in your body does not defile you, but what comes out. So it's all like coming together. Um, I mean, Christ himself said. What comes out, meaning what your words and what you speak, is what to follow as a person. And, and that's why we should be slow to speak, slow to anger, and always remember, blessed are the peacemakers, right? So it all kind of comes together. And man, all these verses, after reading, rereading the New Testament over and over again, you just, it, they kind of stick. That's exactly why I wanted to reread the New Testament again is because the more you read it, the more you'll remember, you know, previous verses that kind of go together with other verses in the Bible. It's almost like a uh, a reference in your own mind. You know, like you could get reference Bibles and um, 
you know, I don't know if you guys know what reference Bible is, but underneath a verse it'll say, or on the side, it will show, it'll say the verse, and then either underneath or on the side of the verse, it will reference, it'll put another uh, chapter of the Bible, uh, book of the Bible chapter, the verse number, and it references the verse that you just read. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like that, but in your, in your own mind, and it's really cool. Anyway, James 4. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. See, there you go again. Right, this last part. Uh, if we are friends of the world, in, in, in the Bible it says that we should be separate from the world. Be living in the world, but not of the world. Be not of the world. And here again, do not be a friend of the world. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. It's a great verse right here. Great verse, James 4.8. Be afflicted in mourning, weep, let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Man, there's some hard truth right there. Our life is just but a vapor. And how true is that? How, how many times throughout our life do you say, Time flies. And for God, at least, since he's outside time, we literally are a vapor. Probably like, or we, we can't even compare it to, to what we know, but we can try. Like one second, somebody's there, and the next second, they're gone. But that person could have lived, you know, let's, let's just say 90 to 100 years. But in God's eyes, it was just a second, like a little phew, smoke or vapor, and then gone. For that he ought to say, if the Lord will. Yep. I uh, I started saying that ever since I started to reread um, this particular uh, New Testament reading plan. Because it is. If the Lord wills, I'll wake up tomorrow. If the Lord wills, I'll eat tomorrow. If the Lord wills, you know, I'll be here tomorrow. I'll be alive tomorrow. I'll, I'll draw breath tomorrow if the Lord will. Amen to that, right? We shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. James 5, verse 1. Now go. Go to now. Be rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which of you kept back by fraud crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. 
You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Amen to that. Amen to that. And, it, and it's just this verse is great too, because not only is it talking about the Lord drawing nigh, but also, I think it's also talking about just in general, if you're waiting on the Lord, to just keep being patient. And it's trust me, it's tough. That's why we need to put on the armor of God. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in the word every day for God to strengthen us. Strengthen our patience. Help us be more patient. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. That's another good point. You know, how often are we like waiting on the Lord? But we need to remember Job, the book of Job. Man, can you imagine being in Job's shoes? Or I guess in this case, probably sandals. Um, just imagine what he went through. Of course, you know, you, you can't fully relate to him in his situation because not everybody uh, is married and has children and knows what uh, that bond of marriage is like and what that bond of having children is like and, and losing them and losing tons of livestock and servants and, and goods and, and getting boils in your body and completely sick and and just every basically your life is completely over so not everybody can um, you know imagine what Job really went through but we can still uh, partake a little bit of what he went through and how horrible it would have been to be in his sandals um, but he was very patient through it all and that's why reading that should give us encouragement to be patient for whatever we're waiting on uh, the Lord for just we have to think of Job think of all the other saints in the Bible who waited on the Lord and, and what they went through okay but above all things my brethren swear not neither by heaven neither by the earth neither by any other oath but let your yea be yea and your nay nay lest you fall into condemnation is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if ye have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's a good part. That is a very good part in that verse. The second part here in James 5.16. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Man, that's, a, that's such a strong verse. If we are fervent in prayer, it avails much. Sometimes I think we could, we all take for granted prayer and how much it actually does impact. So that's why prayer is so important. One of the ma many reasons why prayer is important. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that we might not rain, that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways shall save his soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 1.1 1, 1. 
Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, and whom, though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. Amen to that, to Christ's blood. We are covered in the blood of Christ, who sinned not, who was as a lamb without blemish and spot. Wow. Amen. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. And this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. And... There's some great verses in today's reading. First uh, Peter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire to the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. 
Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are the cho a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governor, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thank thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it, if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who is his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the sheep shepherd, and bishop of your souls. First Peter 3, verse 1 Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it be not, not be that outward adorning of pla pla uh, plating, the hair, and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife and unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarize blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good, let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, be happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. 
but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that he suffer for well-doing, than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of a of the filth of the flesh, but to the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. 1 Peter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. He that, uh, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh of the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought to the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lavishnessness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Before this cause it was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but to let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of god and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of god commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator first peter 5 verse 1 the elders which are among you I exhort, who am, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being ensamples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you.
Amen to that, right? Amen to that verse right there. First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen to that. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be the glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God, wherein ye stand. The church that, that is at Babylon, elected together with you, salute you, and doth Marcus, my son, greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Second Peter 1.1 1, 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shewed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have things always in remembrance. We have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we have made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. And when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, and him I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, and when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto the light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Second Peter 2 verse 1 but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, bought them, and bring them bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their panerchious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and of their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. This part's interesting because this verse here basically references the book of Enoch. 
I'm not going to get into that too much today, but uh, research the Book of Enoch. Um, it is quite interesting. Many believe it's not canon or part of the Bible, but uh, it's not. Uh, many people believe that it's not. Um, it's not made by the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, coming inside somebody and and writing it through them. Uh, it could be just. Who knows? Uh, like I said, I can't get into that right now, but look up the book of Enoch. It is very interesting, and it's definitely worth reading, but just have discernment, pray about it, and don't take everything to heart because it's not in our Bible, although it is referenced many times. And here, this is a reference to it too because I've actually read a little bit of it, and in the book of Enoch, he goes into great detail about this this exact thing and there's so many references to the book of enoch in our bible right now so it's very interesting like i said don't take it to heart just have the sermon read i think it is worth reading some people say you should never read it no i think you should but just practice discernment and uh, pray about it before you do read it and um it's just it's interesting so that's all i'll say about that so he cast them down to hell, delivered them to the chains of darkness, to be reserved until judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, in the lust of uncleanness, and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, in heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried within a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved for ever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them that than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is churned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Second Peter 3, verse 1 This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. This they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that 
then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, and without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking of them in these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Yet therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the same air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. And amen. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. As always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him. Have trust in him. And keep waiting upon him. And you'll never be sorry. We shall see you tomorrow. Again, God willingly. With more Bible reading. Day 29. So, thank you guys again. And take care.